In this task, we'll be looking at A5, Remediation Actions. Conduct initial remediation actions on the controls and reassess remediated controls is task A5. Inputs to this task include completed security and privacy assessment reports with findings and recommendations, security and privacy plans, security and privacy assessment plans, and organization and system level risk assessment results. Expected outputs from this task include completed initial remediation actions based on the security and privacy assessment reports, changes to implementations reassessed by the assessment team, updated security and privacy assessment reports, updated security and privacy plans, including changes to the control implementations. Primary responsibility for this task is the system owner, common control provider, and control assessor. They are supported by the authorizing official, the authorizing official's designated representative, the senior agency information security officer, the senior agency official for privacy, the senior accountable official for risk management, the risk executive, information owner or information steward, system security engineer, privacy engineer, system security officer, and system privacy officer. This does align with the SDLC. For a new system, it aligns with development and acquisition or implementation and assessment. For existing systems, it aligns with operations and maintenance. It does align with the cybersecurity framework as profile. So let's dive into this topic. The security and privacy assessment reports describe deficiencies in the controls that could not be resolved during the development of the system or that are discovered post-development. Such control deficiencies may result in a security and privacy risks, including supply chain risks. So we determined during our assessment that were controls that were not implemented correctly. And in this task, we're going to remediate some of those findings. The findings generated during the control assessment provide information that facilitates risk response based on the organizational risk tolerances and priorities. The authorizing official in consultation and coordination with system owners and other organizational officials may decide that certain findings represent significant unacceptable risk and require immediate remediation actions. Additionally, it may be possible and practical to conduct initial remediation actions for assessment findings that can be quickly and easily remediated with existing resources. So in this slide, we're talking about two different cases in which the authorizing official would push to have remediation done on controls that are found to be unacceptable or not functioning as required. In the first case, those controls being deficient introduce significant unacceptable risk and they have to be corrected before the system can continue on in the SDLC and the RMF. The second case is controls that can be quickly fixed and remediated with the existing resources before the system goes on. So in the first case, it's just a risk that the AO will not accept and it has to be fixed right now. And in the second case, it's possible to fix risks that maybe are not that significant, but the resources are available and we can conduct the remediation quickly and move on with the system in its development. If initial remediation actions are taken, assessors reassess the controls. The control reassessments determine the extent to which the remediated controls are implemented correctly, operating as intended and producing the desired outcome with respect to meeting the security and privacy requirements for the system and the organization. So if we do remediation actions on those two cases we just talked about, then we want to have the control assessors come back and reassess any controls that were remediated. So those things that were fixed during the remediation period must be reassessed and then we'll update the report as required. The assessors update the assessment reports with the findings from the reassessment, but do not change the original assessment results. 
The security and privacy plans are updated based on the findings of the control assessment and any remediation actions taken. The updated plans reflect the state of the controls after the initial assessment and modifications by the system owner or common control provider in addressing recommendations for corrective actions. So it's important that we don't remove the finding from the assessment report. We just update it to state that that has been corrected and it's now working as it's intended. So the controls are actually in place. Privacy plan and the security plan need to be updated as well to explain how the control was actually implemented after the remediation. So we wanna make sure everything gets updated after the technical or other controls have been corrected. And we wanna make sure all the documentation, whether it's the security plan or the assessment report is updated as needed to show the correction has taken place. At the completion of the control assessment, the security and privacy plans contain an accurate description of the implemented controls, including compensating controls. That's why we update that plan. It should show the most current view of the system. It's a living document. The security plan, the privacy plan, the assessment report are all what we call living documents. They're continually updated with information as it is discovered and as it is updated. Organizations can prepare an addendum to the security and privacy assessment report that provides an opportunity for the system owners and common control providers to respond to the initial assessment findings. The addendum may include, for example, information regarding the initial remediation actions taken by the system owners or common control provider in response to assessor findings. So the system owner and the common control providers cannot influence the security assessment report or the privacy assessment report, but they can write an addendum to those documents that shows things from their point of view and explains controls that maybe are not in place or maybe they don't agree with the assessor. The addendum can also provide the system owner or common control provider perspective on the findings. This may include providing additional explanatory material, rebutting certain findings, and correcting the record. The addendum does not change or influence the initial assessor findings provided in the reports. The information provided in the addendum is considered by authorizing officials when making risk-based authorization decisions. And again, we don't, we don't influence the actual assessment report by providing this addendum. This addendum provides the uh, place for the system owner or the common control provider to provide their view of the assessment and the way the controls were implemented. And then the AO can look at both the report and the addendum in totality when they're making their authorization decision and determining the risk of the information system moving into production. Organizations implement a process to determine the initial actions to take regarding control deficiencies identified during the assessment. This process can address vulnerabilities and risk, false positives and other factors that provide useful information to authorizing officials regarding the security and privacy posture of the system and organization, including the ongoing effectiveness of system specific hybrid and common controls. The issue resolution process can also ensure that only substantive items are identified and transferred to the plan of action and milestones. Findings from a system level control assessment may necessitate an update to the system risk assessment and the organizational risk assessment. The updated risk assessments and any inputs from the senior accountable official for risk management or risk executive function determines the initial remediation actions and the prioritization of those actions. So a system level assessment may impact the organizational risk assessment or the system level risk assessment. And it's gonna be up to those risk officials within the organization, including the senior accountable official for risk management or the risk executive function to determine what remediation actions and the prioritization of those actions as they need to take place. System owners and common control providers may decide based on a system and organizational risk assessment that certain findings are inconsequential and present no significant security or privacy risk. 
Such findings are retained in the security and privacy assessment reports and monitored during the monitoring step. The authorizing official is responsible for reviewing and understanding the assessor findings and for accepting the security and privacy risks, including any supply chain risk that result from the operation of the system or the use of the common controls. So when the system owner or the common control provider looks at the report, they can determine that some of the controls may be a low impact and may not be worth correcting. There is no significant risk based on the controls as they set, even if they're not providing the level of protection they're designed to provide. Now this needs to be approved by the authorizing official. And when they review the report and those findings, they will make that determination. In all cases, organizations review assessor findings to determine the significance of the findings and whether the findings warrant any further investigation or remediation. And really this is where the authorizing official is going to review things and determine if they agree with the report, if they agree with the remediation, and if they agree with those controls that are determined to be inconsequential. Senior leadership's involvement in the mitigation process is necessary to ensure the organization's resources are effectively allocated in accordance with organizational priorities. By providing resources to the systems that are supporting the most critical missions and business functions or correcting deficiencies that pose the greatest risk. So it's up to senior leadership to determine where the money and resources is going to go in providing remediation actions. And they'll do this at the organizational level and provide those allocated resources to those things that directly support the mission of the organization or pose the greatest risk. References of this task include Special Publication 853 Alpha and Special Publication 800 Volume 1. In this module, we discussed Task A5, its inputs and outputs, roles and responsibilities, SDLC and CSF alignment, control deficiencies, assessment findings, remediation, reassessment, reassessment report updates, accurate descriptions, the report addendum, initial actions, issue resolution, inconsequential finding, finding significance, senior leadership involvement, and finally references. If any of this doesn't look familiar to you, I suggest you go to that part of the video and watch it again. If it all makes sense, on to the next video, or if you're taking the course, on to the course material to further understand this topic.